Hello, Rim the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 262. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, everybody. So good to be here. Um, we've got another beautiful day here in the Ozarks, don't we, sweetheart? We do. And uh, I think we've got a word for you that, you know, I've really been uh, seeking God this last week because last week when I heard, you know, when I felt like a line had been crossed, I thought, oh, Father in heaven, help us. <laughs> Uh, because I mean, when you cross the line with God, there's there's going to be some a reaction, and so um, do you want to keep going here, hon, and then I'll put my stuff in after, or you want me to start? You How'd start. You, you want me to start? Okay. Well, this is uh, the word that kept coming through my mind uh, because I just kept going there over and over. Was in Ezekiel um, chapter eleven. Let me get to that real quick, <clears throat> because the, the word is recompense. And it says in Ezekiel eleven twenty one, But as for them whose heart walketh after the heart of their detestable things and their abominations, I will recompense their way upon their own heads, saith the Lord God. Um, you know, Ezekiel 11 is about judging the bad stuff <laughs> and that was that was amongst the people of god these it were was. people that were you know just because you're in that group of people that say you belong to god that doesn't mean there's not some evil going on uh, and it doesn't mean that it won't cost you your life you know i i know people kind of pitter pat around this thing about you know oh you can sin and you can do this but i i'm telling you guys um, I sure didn't realize the ramifications of sin when I was young. But in these last 26 years, I have watched and I have seen Satan steal lives, lives of Christians, lives of their children. I've watched it. I know it's real. Um, it's not God's will. Mm -mm. It is no, not. not. You know, there are things that happen that, that we're God's ways are so high we won't understand them all. But I can tell you, that uh, there are m way more bad things happen at the hands of the enemy, even among Christians, guys, simply because we have not been taught in that we have been deceived. Absolutely. We've been deceived. Um, we've been taught things in churches. People will grab, like Mike always says, a snippet or something and go with it. And because of that, Somehow we've we've been deceived into thinking, well, you know, you, you're sinning over here, but hey, no big deal. Ask for ask God to forgive you and go on. That's not that's not the right attitude. Well, they they pull out like uh, scriptures where Paul said, "I'm not under the law," not realizing that that whole phrase that the Hebraic expression goes back to Acts chapter 15, where you were trusting in circumcisions for salvation, or even that the Jewish people had to keep the law to be saved, even i.e. deliverance out of Egypt, God gave it to him after he set them free. The The law is, is for people that are free, mm -hmm. not are for people that are in bondage. And so he was dealing with this misuse, and now, now they'll always quote that one, but you know what gets them? It, it, they end up looking like a deer in headlights when I quote in 1 Corinthians, Paul says, circumcision is nothing, uncircumcision is nothing, but keeping the commandments of God, uh, they look like they've been hit, you know, hit between the head with a, with a, with a two-by-four because they can't, they cannot, in their own theology, reconcile both those statements from the Apostle mm -hmm. Paul, not realizing the historical context in which he was saying that in the book of Romans. Well, I think, um, I mean, I am a perfect example of somebody in such bondage. And I remember, you know, things being taught in the churches we were at and things like that. And when I came out of bondage, it was just like a new life for me. And it was, it was like things were becoming so clear. It was just like I knew things that went against everything I'd ever heard and things like that, but I just knew it. And I, that's when, you know, I was trying to talk to you. And, and uh, of course, you were used to my depressed state, so I'm sure that was quite a shock, you know, me saying things. And, and did you, I, when I was saying things to you, like, I don't think we're going to 
have a rapture and get out of here before things get bad. Did you think, boy, she's come out of this depression and went nuts? Did you? I mean, you probably had some. Well, I thought, boy, it sure is bucking with my dispensational theologies. <laughs> but I mean, I, I could see why yeah. you'd think that. But but I'm going to tell you something but about it, like but, somebody will take a scripture and used to, I bought it. I thought, boy, that sounds good. Is people would take, um, since we're talking about recompense today, people were will take a scripture that says, if you catch a thief, he has to pay back sevenfold. And I remember that being taught that, okay, you know, Satan's a thief, so you ca- you catch him and you command him to give you back sevenfold. And I when I, once I got through the bondage, and I was I was looking through things, and I read that, and I thought, oh, my word, I don't want him giving me anything. Yeah, I don't want him. Re- he's not the one that restores in my life. Almighty God is. So anything that, that he's taken, I tell you what, you keep it, sucker. Almighty God's <laughs> going to give me well, restoration. It'll be tainted and have all kinds of strings well, who attached Who would want to something it? brought back? You know, it's things like that that I think, boy, it sounds good. But we got to be really, really careful yeah. about what we're taught. And we have been taught so many things wrong. And I am not putting down the, the people that have taught these things. I think we've all been caught up in some kind of a crazy, mixed-up uh, plot of the enemy. And I think that, that he gained the strength to deceive through all of the things that were done back when they you know, said you can't, can't have God in school anymore. We're going to do abortions, you know, and it was being proclaimed and accepted in, into the church to a great degree. It had to be because I lived through some of it is that, well, you know, we're, we just can't keep from sinning and just just be, you know, repent and go on. When we should have been taught, there is a great cost for sin. And let me tell you why you don't, you know, and not not to say that if someone sins that they are not to be forgiven and and not under condemnation. I'm not saying that at all. But there was this was all leading up to this greasy grace thing that we have now, where people are saying, "Oh, Jesus paid for your sin. Just go ahead and live and have a happy life." I mean, there is something so defiled in what we've been taught. And you know, I remember when I was coming out of that bondage, and God said, "They've defiled my house, my name, my word," and and they have. It Absolutely. has been a defilement, a defilement of what we've called the house of God and these temples. And so, you know, I was I was thinking about what line have they crossed, God? There's no telling, you know, what's coming coming up. And he took me to that scripture in Ezekiel, and so the, the key word was recompense. So I went through, uh, and first of all, I just looked up. I always just look up in the regular dictionary what recompense me, and it says the as a verb it makes – Make amends to someone for loss or harm suffered. Compensate. Offenders should recompense their victims. Then it goes compensate, indemnify, repay, reimburse, pay money to, make reparation to, make restitution to, make amends to. Then as a noun, it's compensation or reward given for loss or harm suffered or effort made. And um, so when I was looking, I went through all the scriptures on recompense. And you can it can be for your good, <laughs> Like a reward for your good, uh, because like we can uh, look at Ruth two, twelve, and it says, "The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings thou art come to trust." There is one that we can we can say for us in Isaiah thirty five four. It says, "Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even." Uh, with a recompense, he will come and save you. Boy, that's a good yeah. one. We've talked about that before. It's such a promise, uh, you know, for those that just feel like you you got the tar beat out of you. I mean, I know what it's like. I can so relate to people that say, I am so beat down that I feel like I can't even lift my head. Can I relate? I know what that's like. I know what it's like to have to try to get up out of the bed feeling like you're carrying 2,000. And you just put one foot in front of the other because you're so beat down physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Um, so there's there's those type of things, but for the most part, it's it's what God will do to the wicked, um, and you know, it says in Deuteronomy thirty two thirty five, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. You'll go over and over if you look up recompense, and it is it's. It's one after another where God says, 
Um, I'll give you another example, Jeremiah 16, 18. And first, I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. Because they have defiled my land, they have filled my inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. Yeah. So so you're looking at through the word um, tons of, of, of things. Yeah, it's, it's, it, the recompense is, is in the King James Version is used 26 times throughout the word of God. And uh, you know, looking at the Hebrew, because I want, I want, and it, it it reflects the exact same thing. It can be good, or it can be very bad, depending upon what you've done. And uh, in Hebrew, it's shalom, which its very first definition is to be in the covenant of peace. But when you look at all this, there then you begin to see an act of God to be uh, to be made complete, to be sound, uh, to make safe. To make whole or good, restore or make compensation. And uh, then you can also go into the bad to require compensation reward to be paid uh, to make an end of. And, you know, when I, when I was looking at these, I was thinking of in the introduction to the, the Kingdom Priesthood book, which, by the way, hopefully will be in print uh, through Amazon next week. If everything goes right, I, there's still a couple of corrections I found that I need to make and resubmit it to them, and it takes them 72 hours to go through that process. But in in remember Mary in the thing where I was talking about the um, about the remnant, and the remnant even includes those who have a this heart desire to serve God, but their bondages have been in the way, and they're constantly wrestling with these bondages to try to overcome them. Uh, so they could serve God, and there was a prophetic word that God is going to break those bondages so they can. That's enfolded into this word compensation. Because they didn't yield to those bondages, they're actually struggling against them with all that they have, that God is going to honor that when he comes and gives uh, recompense. It's them getting set free. It's them being made sound. It's them being made whole. Mm -hmm. And so, I, so it's like without realizing what I was even writing in that I was basically prophesying what is getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. And guys, we, we need for God uh, to move in power. There are things in America, there are things in the Western world that have got to be judged for anybody to survive. Yes, it is. Um, and, you know, we, we can all see this. We've not brought in the last day's harvest yet. No. That's ahead. How long we have to do that, we don't know. We know that these are definitely the end times because we can see the things in Matthew 24. We can see the things that are, that are happening, increases of, you know, the earthquakes and just so many things that, that make us think we're at the end, but we don't know how long we have. Um, and, you know, at the, the top of my mind is always, Father, we need to be able to be a people that can show that you are the one true God, the most high God, almighty, can do all things, that there's none that can stand beside you. And so I think that's that's part of what's going on, um, and I think that we can explain some of, some of this. Um, I think that um, very few of us have seen in the last, you know, if you've been alive as long as we have, it's just been like a downward spiral. And there, there have been times when God has moved and there have been things that God has done and, and truth that's been brought out that we've been able to cling to. But even in the last 26 years, as I've been looking at all these things, Mike, I've just seen lives destroyed one after another, ministries destroyed, ministries going off the rails. I mean, getting off into things that I'm thinking, this is such an error that it's going to take you off a cliff. And so, and many of them, they have theologically, but they have continued to prosper because they're being, they're being fed by the Laodicean well, and, carnal church. Yeah, it's, it's people wanting to have a good word so badly. They need something to grab a hold of, some hope that, they're, that they'll grab a hold of the wrong things. But in, in my opinion, that just makes it worse. It does. Because every time you listen to a preacher talk and they say, oh, you, you, know, you sow this seed, you do this, you do this, and God's going to do this, and then their lives continue lead you know disintegrate and so then you you just lose your hope and i've i've talked to so many people that have just lost hope it's just like i'm just hanging on i got my fingernails and thank god that they've got god's given them the strength to hang on because because they're just kind of sitting there thinking as god left us yeah you know what in the world's 
happening. And well, our our true turning point was when we learned repentance and began keeping the commandments of God mm-hmm. by the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That's it. That began to change the tide of everything. That's right. And that and um, I believe that the more we've had an understanding as God's revealed it, and the more we've been able to do that, our lives have. Um, We've had lots of challenges through the years, but we've we've consistently seen the increase. And where it used to be, if we'd just get a little bit of hope, we'd get knocked back over. But now we're just consistently, and I and I think it's simply because nothing to do with us. It's everything to do about how do we keep your commandments, God? Yeah. When most of the churches said, "Hey, you don't even have to read the Old Testament. We're just stuck here in the New." You know, this is all, you've got all this power, you got all this stuff. You, They're telling people you can command angels, all this stuff. And you have to understand, you have to go back and, you know, that's where God started me. When I, when I came out of this, you know, I, I was used to just reading things when I could read it very few times in the New Testament. But he took me back when I was finally able to read the Word, and he started me in the beginning and went through. And that's when I understood that Jesus was the God of the Old Testament. Yeah. And and then everything just made sense. It's just like it all fell into place. I understood why God did what he did in the Old Testament. I understood exactly what was going on. Um and and we have just we've just been set up is what it is. And here's the good news, uh, is I was so concerned about, you know, I'd really been thinking a lot this this last week about, well, we need to start preparing again because I don't know what this means. I don't know what when you cross the line what this means and i've been seeing some things just having a vision here and and just uh just pictures just nothing with it but just seeing pictures some of that involves some warfare stuff i mean physical warfare like nation against nation and so i'm thinking okay we're still we still have this old grid where if we would have an emp you talk about trouble yeah because and and i i know where we are that that we're not on um we're on a separate grid than a lot of the nation, but we're all tied together too. And so my my thought has been, okay, God, is it time for me to do some other things that you've shown me that we need to work toward? Um, and so I'm still preparing, guys. Don't think by what I'm saying here today that I've stopped. I'm gonna. I'd kind of laxed off on rotating food out and getting things at our house. We've got several things that we've got to get done before winter, uh, as far as like there's a building project we got going on on our we have a back porch and mike's going to make that a a wonderful place (laughs) and so we've got things that we're doing but this gave me hope again that um that we're god's people will make it yeah god's people will make it now are we going to see a bunch of stuff yes we are there's no way around it we're going to see some stuff, and we're seeing some stuff right now. You know, we have to realize what's really going on behind the scenes. And, you know, one of them, and you, know, you and I have been very vocal uh, that the black community does ha- has had injustices, and they have a right Absolutely. to speak out. Yeah. But what communists love to do is they love to, t- they love to usurp whatever movement's going on, and they like to put a great name. You know, it's, it's almost like reading Orwell's 1984 and that they would they would call the the ministry that basically suppressed the people they would call it the ministry of truth or the ministry of freedom when you when you look at the origins of black lives matter the and they actually have it on video and I've watched a video back here I guess it was 2015 that the co-founder said we're trained marxists marxists will burn down a nation it, it's it's the same thing that in, in fact I believe the french revolution was the trial run of the Illuminati testing these things with with the Jacobins, and we've already talked about that. Well, you see the same thing in the takeover of Russia, the takeover of China. It's bloody. It's horrible. They And what's interesting, now, if you've been watching the news, uh, at first they said, okay, we're, we're offended by the statues of the Confederate generals. I never – to me, it's like, why do we have Confederate generals – Anywhere in America, they lost. Uh, it's the same thing with the Confederate flag. You know that that's that they they lost. That that should have been put in the in the dustbin of, of history, as far as I'm concerned. Of course, I'm from the North. You know, um, 
but now they've gone over. They've they've actually tore down statues of Columbus. They've tore down statues of abolitionists, which abolitionists are the ones that were against slavery from the very beginning and help and help promote in the North for us standing against slavery. They're tearing that down now. They now they recently, one of their key leaders has called for the destruction of any statues of Jesus and the destruction of all churches. This this is communism. Mm-hmm. And they did it in they did it in in the French Revolution. They did it in 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 China. They've done it in Russia. And so and this thing if if we're not careful, if we don't begin praying can feed on itself. It's called a Gregory. And uh, Tom Horn notes this in in looking at the French Revolution that when you look historically at this thing and it begin to foment, even historians will look at it and say for a period of two, three, four, five years, however long that was, the nation of France went collectively mad. So much so that, you know, after after the guillotines and they were they they would kill anybody that was in their way, they begin killing their own people. And it's, you know, you didn't know who next Rose Pierre was going to, even his own key men. Well, you see that in, in, in the Soviet Union, that Stalin, his key men, he would get together, and he, he always really pushed radical obedience. Okay, here's 10 of my most faithful men. Your job is to figure out which one of you you're going to kill. And when I come back, there can only be nine alive. All these, all these crazy things. And these this demonic spirit, this Gregory feeds on all that and and begins to be begins influencing a society to go mad and so i i think some of the things that god has been teaching us for a long time of praying that god would forgive the sins and mm-hmm. we need to begin by daily, de- daily daily asking forgiveness for the sins being done by these people that are not really there for the benefit of the black community, they're there yeah. to cause destruction. And there's a difference. And it, absolutely, and it, it breaks my heart that they're usurping a, a righteous cause that these things should not be happening. Well, you know, they had the the one thing that just I brought me to tears was when the you, we had the one NASCAR driver that was an African-American, and some horrible person put a, a noose there. In his, which it had to be, I think with their security, they've determined it had to be somebody that works there. On the inside, yeah. But all the all of the other drivers that were Caucasian banded with him, and they they were in support of him, and that was that was apparent. See, that's what we need. Yeah, that's what we need. We need to to have every Caucasian American stand up and say, "We're not going to allow this anymore. You are not doing this to our brothers and sisters. You're not doing it. No, whether whether they are African American, whether they're Asian, you're not going to do this. No. And so when we rise up and do that, and and those in the in the black community are are elevated above this insanity that that is going on because it's a it's a facade. Yeah. It's not really for the African Americans benefit. It's for the destruction of America. And so they're doing all these crazy things and they've shown themselves. You know, you don't just tear down everything, especially if it doesn't have anything to do with your cause. You know, it's it's just crazy. But, but the, 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 and when when you look at at how that the the communists took over Russia. You first divide the nation, okay, whether it's the haves and have-nots, or the color of your skin, or whatever whatever modality they can find, they destroy the history of that nation. So all the statues of everything have to be destroyed. They did that. The second, so and then the third thing they did is they began discrediting and defunding the police so that there would be no resistance against the riots. You can see the you can see the Marxist playbook playing out in America. Our news media is mm-hmm. complicit. And I, sure. and I and I believe when uh, the several things was going on, when you know Pelosi and all of them, they all knelt and they, they had that African garb on. Number one, they just proclaimed uh, complicity in the Marxist takeover because they, they understand Black Lives Matter because all Black Lives Matter runs back to Soros. In fact, one of the other the, one of the other co-founders, Soros put him in one of his mansions, one of his houses. He housed him. They, they've been they've been giving financial support through the various organizations. All leads to this things. Same with Antifa. It all it all runs back to Soros. Um, but they also, with that particular garb coming from Africa, that was a particular tribe that were the warlords that was the leading sellers of slaves in Africa. 
And so it was saying, we're, we're Marxists, we're bowing to this, but we're still in control is what I'm seeing at that whole imagery. And what I'm saying, Father, bring it all down. Let everything be, and let, mm-hmm. let the, the complicit, you know, the, the complicit behavior, because the, all these things, all these signs, anybody in media that has studied history knows exactly what's going on in America and is going by the communist playbook, and they're purposely hiding it, Mary. They are purposely hiding it. We have got to set those that justifying our, our peaceful demonstrators and absolute anarchy that is set for nothing and will be satisfied with nothing except the complete destruction of America. And so, I mean, if there's ever a time to raise up and begin to pray and seek the face of God, and we need to have rec, recom, you know, recompense, and, and look at this. If God recompenses those within the within the black community that have sought the face of God, because you know this this whole thing when I saw this that uh, this one black leader was calling for the destruction of all the churches, that goes against the majority of the African American people in America because they know it was their faith in God that that even helped bring them strength of coming out of slavery, and it is it is such it is such a vital vibrant part of who they are Uh, that's true and and now this now this group is calling for the destruction of churches we're going to see a way hey now back off now you've you went too far i I think we're going to see that and at the same time i think god is going to reward those that are his Mm -hmm. in the midst of all this and to bring justice and to and to bring where this prejudice stops it's not the color of somebody's skin it's the condition of their heart that matters Mm -hmm. Well, that's throughout the word. Absolutely. That's for sure. And I believe that that's, that's what the recompense is going to be targeting. I think it's, it's going to bring reward to those that are obedient or true to God in their heart, not just with their mouth, in yeah. their heart. This will show us whose hearts belong to God. Yes. There will be a reward. And I, I am telling you, this is what came to my mind. I, I had to look up where it was because you know me and my trying to find where the word's at. Um, but it, let me read in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6. And it says, um, I don't know where to start here. Let's, let's just start here with verse 10. It says, And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Uh, Then beware lest thou forget the Lord, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Um, And it's... It was, it was reminding me that there have been so many things that have been taken, so many things that people have lost. You know, I've heard reports here lately, even in our area, uh, because of the this virus that caused everything to shut down, people are losing their homes, my. Yeah. You know, they had that one stimulus package, but that wasn't enough to keep people going. Well, that was a drop in the and bucket. And then you have the other side. We heard on our local news the other day, they were talking about the the teenagers and uh, young people that came and worked in, like, the restaurants and things like that, uh, getting 100 $150 a week. They didn't want to come back because they were getting $600 a week or unemployment. More. Yeah. And so, so look at the look at the mess this has caused, and and people that have families that have have lost jobs and such income that they can't go on. And I was thinking, okay, I know um, this is this is part of what God's allowing to happen, because then there's going to be a recompense for His people. Yes, and He told me that this time of recompense will begin this September. Um, which also happens to be when the fe- the fall feasts began. We'll have the uh, Day of Atonement, and then I think the Feast of Tabernacles goes into October this year. Um, but I was kind of putting that together, and I thought, this isn't by just coincidence, Mm-mm. the things that are happening. Um, there is an exposing. There, I mean, this is to the degree, you know, a lot of what we've dealt with all these years, there you would have had to got to fringe reporting 
really, you know, p- people that aren't widely known to even find out some of the things that have happened. Yet, you know, it's just it's just people can't hardly handle it. Well, wasn't that a that was a local thing that we just heard about or I read, and it was talking about a person that got arrested, and they had. I can't remember how many images on their phone and their computer of child pornography, and it involved even babies. Yeah. And I thought, see, this stuff's been going on a long time. People didn't know it. And so this is hard. This is going to be shake people. When they see what's been going on that God is now exposing and he's going to expose this to the highest levels. And guess how he's going to do it? Recompense. Mm-hmm. They did it to themselves. Yes. They have done this and done this and thought we can get away with it. Now, why anybody in their right mind would think they could put anything on a computer or a telephone these days and think that somebody couldn't find it? I don't know. I don't know what world they're living in. They must not understand surveillance, and they must not understand people that can hack into anything. I, I mean, you just you would have to be, you know, not have any kind of thought process to think you're not going to get caught. But nevertheless, and maybe it's more because of maybe God's blinded them to that, so they can be exposed. Because this is the craziest stuff. I mean, when I've known this for a long time, but when you hear it in the news, the actual news, you go, "Oh my word." Mm-hmm. Oh, my goodness. And there are actually people out there that we knew years ago that were promoting this stuff, saying it's okay. Another little fringe thing that you wouldn't have heard about. And now you got you got the reporting on the news. Is there are people that are saying, well, and just because somebody, what was that report? And said just because somebody looks at that doesn't mean that they would do it. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come on. How goofy do you have to be? Oh, so anyway, my my thought was this. We, we've we got to seek God, every one of us, on God. Is there any place there's disobedience in my life? Whether I knew it or not, is there something been taught that has put me into a disobedient place where I'm out of order, where I'm um, by default not doing something to where I'm I'm not flowing with your kingdom? Because in the kingdom, within obedience, is where the reward, this recompense, will come. That's when you're going to have, you may have went your whole life and you can't get ahead of things uh, financially. You know, it, it may be a curse on your family. It might be, you no know, tell them what's going on. There's, you're going to get a house. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the kind of thing I'm telling you. Um, you know, a lot of people would disagree and they say, now, Mary, things are just going to get worse and worse and worse. Um well, it's what we said all along that God can spot judge, yeah, just like He spot judge the Pharaoh. But when God's people walked out of Egypt, they they had they were laden down yeah. with the treasures of Egypt. He's a rewarder. God's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. So He's not going to leave His people that are seeking Him with all their hearts, saying, "God, I'll change what I got to change. I'll do what I need to do. You show me, Father, and I'll we'll make it right." When you've got that kind of heart, God will move mountains. To yes, bring blessings to you. He'll show you where the enemy stole it. He'll show you what you need to pray. He'll make a way to where you can be part of this reward that's coming to his people. Because it says in the word that when these type of things happen, when God just He recompenses the evil on the evil, mm-hmm. people whose hearts are evil, and when he blesses, his people, like in Deuteronomy 28, those blessings that you're going to be the head, not the tail. Everything you touch is going to be blessed. When he does that type of thing, all the nations start to recognize there's just one true God. Yes. There's one good God. That's right. That he loves his people. He loves all his creation. But I can tell you one thing. The blessings will flow to his children. Yes. So is that not what we need for this last day's harvest, for all nations to look and see, I see him. I see that God that they fear and that they obey. And look what he's, he's doing. He's providing. He's keeping them safe. But look what is happening to these evil people that have done abominations beyond what most people can even fathom. And so 
watch what God's getting ready to do. I don't know how it's going to transpire, but I, I believe with all my heart, and I want you to grab a hold of this by faith. You know, there there is something to, you know, I don't agree with a lot of what the faith movement have said, but there are are pieces of information there that are true. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let's grab by faith this word. That's right. That's this September is the beginning of a time of recompense. This will take care of evil judges. This will take care of evil politicians. This will take care of these pedophiles pedophiles or pedophiles whichever one you want this is going to take care of some stuff because they've done it to themselves yes and what i'm believing is this whole thing they're going to overplay their hand and there's going to be such a backlash Mm -hmm. uh, on this now one of the things that you know i'm sensing in my spirit that's going to be so important is there there is a period called teshuvah that for 40 days before the day of atonement is a time of of Prayer, repentance, fasting, all these things to prepare for the Day of Atonement. And it goes back all the way all the way back into the time of Moses from the first time he came down uh, with the Ten Commandments. They were basically having an orgy in the worship of the golden calf, and, and uh, there was some recompensing going on there too. But the second time that Moses went up actually corresponds when he came back down the set. Now that, so, you know, the first time there was 40 days up there, they were doing all this crazy stuff. He goes back up again. He's gone for another 40 days. They're making sure they're right with God because they saw what happens when Moses comes back down and (laughs) you've not been doing the right thing. Mary, he came back down when he came back with the second set of tablets on the day of atonement. And so Israel ever since then has, has, has declared a time of teshuvah up until the Day of Atonement. I think this year is going to be of strategic significance in the kingdom. That if we enter into those 40 days, all you got to do is go to your calendar, see when the Day of Atonement is, just count back 40 days, and that's when it begins. Let's, let's just start having some extra fasting and this mm-hmm. prayer and, and Holy Spirit, show me anything that I need to repent of. Even if I, even if, it, if it's, a, it's a bondage that I don't have victory over yet, I'm looking for the day of atonement to set me free, mm-hmm. but I'm re, show me everything that I need to repent of to prepare the way of the Lord to setting me free. That's it. Because when the when uh, when God begins to recompense, I want to be on the right side. I want to be on the side that here's your freedom, here's your restoration. Here you are being made sound. Here you are being made whole. Here you are now that you and now that you are. And this this is something else that's coming up in my spirit. I remember when that one morning you woke up and it was all gone. Mm-hmm. You had an insatiable appetite for the Word of God. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't and, get enough of it. And because you did and because you studied spiritual warfare and you studied all these things during those months that you were free, prepared you for when God allowed it to come back for you to fight it and yeah, have victory I over it. I had to take authority and, and defeat it. And so after, after this recompense begins to happen, don't waste the blessing. Get into the Word so that if it, that in this whole thing, God says, okay, now you, you've you got the strength. It's now time for you to slay your giant. You're going to be ready to slay your giant. Well, and, and there are so many things that in America we have just by default taken on as idolatry. Yes. You know, I've known people that, that you know, would get euphoric at going shopping. And it came to a point like in their life that if they couldn't go shopping, like they, they would be so distraught. It, it was an idol. Somehow that the material goods or something, it became an idol. I know people that, that couldn't stand the thought of picking up their Bible, but boy, they would do anything for their sports team. We've been taught idolatry. Yeah. That's part of the Babylonian system we're under. Anything like that, anything you won't lay down. If I want you to do some reflection. I want you to think, is there a holiday? Is there anything, a tradition? Is there anything that you, at the thought of you laying it down, you just go, no, there's some idolatry for you. Yeah. And I mean, I've been searching my heart for it for, for a long, long time. Well, you know, let's, let's look at even the, the pedestal everybody puts actors or singers or dancers or whatever Oh, yeah, on. big time. Just because they can sing doesn't mean they are, they are a brilliant political analyst or, or that their opinion about anything beyond a song even really matters. But their songs move things. Yeah. 
But it's, it's like everybody clamps onto everything they say or, or simply because somebody is a good actor and, and can read the lines with gusto or yeah. feeling or whatever doesn't mean that. And, and, you know, it's like we, we get so attached to those people like that. Okay, you, you get attached to that character. Guys, the script told them what to say. The script told them you have this feeling here, you have this here. And many times they're the absolute opposite of what they're actually playing on yeah. TV or on or in a movie. And yet we set them on a pedestal. And, and I think one of the things in, that I, that really gets me, we, we have all these Antifa people that are being, that are being uh, arrested for their violence. You have all the Hollywood actors rate giving millions of dollars to set them free. But I have yet, Mary, and in, in all the things, and I, I actually have aggregators going out looking for this information, just one actor to say, you know, there was this beautiful black family that that their business was burnt down. I'm going to give them a million dollars to, or, or let's raise the funds so they can rebuild their business. Mary, that has not happened one time. Absolute hypocrisy. You see, it's it's not really about the black community it's not and that is so sad and and so why do we put what they think up on a pedestal and the ones to do that are the ones that have rejected the word of god they've got to put something on a pedestal if we're going to elevate anything it needs to be the word of god it needs to be jesus as king Mm -hmm. and if we don't by by just default we start building idols of our own yeah well, we're always going to look for something so that we can be a part, yeah. Or, or we we feel some significance because because our our society also presses you down. Yeah. It, it just automatically does unless you're being used in this agenda of of the kingdom of darkness, where you do get elevated. Most people get pressed down, yeah. and I and I've seen that over and over. And you can usually see with the people that are getting elevated, there's there's something there that Satan's using them. Yeah. And and then we've seen those that got elevated, and then Satan said, "I'm done with you." And, and you see, and you see sheet. that he cares nothing for any person. No. He just is a user, where God is constantly seeking to get you on the path to life. Get you away from that death that Lucifer's offering, that that sin and death that he's got you on a path on. He's God's constantly trying to woo you and say, "No, make this decision. Yeah. Come this way." A slave of Babylon, whether they're in the pit or they're up on a pedestal, are still in chains, mm-hmm. and that's the opposite of the kingdom of God. Jesus, whom the Son sets free, is free indeed. And what I've discovered is the more that we lift Him up the higher he can lift us up out of the mire of Babylon. Well, that's right. That's right. That's exactly right. And understand who he is. Understand that he's a loving God. And don't be afraid to go and look at him in the Old Testament just because you see a lot of of judgment going on. If it hadn't been for that judgment, none of us would have been here. Yeah, a lot of the judgment was was against the the Nephilim still trying to take mm-hmm. over even after the flood. And those that were totally tied yeah. to them. And, and we, we need to realize that this whole concept of Jesus being different than the God of the Old Testament is heresy that leads all the way back to Marcion in the second century that he was cast out of the out of, out of of Antioch and declared the firstborn son of Satan. That all goes back to him. Isaiah 9. And in fact, uh, we just sang a song about that here the other day, Isaiah 9. He shall be called, and this is talking about Messiah, wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, mm-hmm. the Prince of Peace. And it was talking about Jesus. That the only, t- the only time that we see a pure expression of the Father is the Ancient of Days in the vision of Daniel when Messiah was appearing before him. But from the very beginning, it was Jesus that took the clay and made Adam. Mm-hmm. It was Jesus that ended up having to cast them out of the garden and said, I'll fix this. It was Jesus that parted the Red Sea. It was Jesus that set Mount Sinai on fire. It was Jesus that poured the plagues out on Egypt. It was Jesus that was the angel that was set before him that he that they warned, listen, you'll not be forgiven if you don't do what this angel did. That, 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 that messenger was Messiah. Mm-hmm. 
You know, theologically, we can call that a Christophanes. It's always been Jesus. Jesus is always has been the knowable aspect of Almighty God. That's right. Whether it's Old Testament or New Testament, there is no way to the Father except through him. And we serve one God who has manifested himself in our dimensional reality as three witnesses, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're not three separate entities like you and Mary and I are separate. It's expressions because God lives on such a higher plane than us. And, you know, sometimes understanding the Godhead can warp your head, but if you can fully understand it, then you're no longer dealing with God. He's that big. That he loves us. But the moment that God made man, he revealed himself as Yahweh Elohim. God balanced mercy. Now, mercy, you know, the way that we've been taught theology, we think Yahweh is a God of justice and and he's just, and he's so harsh. Yahweh actually represents the mercy of God. Elohim is the justice of God. God had to balance them when he created man. And they're still balanced today. We try to make it all mercy and no justice. Mm-hmm. And then you know, there's some that try to make it all justice and no mercy. Jesus is the perfection of balance. The first time he came, he came as Yahweh. He came to be Messiah ben David. He's getting ready, to, or Messiah ben Joseph. He's getting ready to come back as Messiah ben David. Mm-hmm. And that is the ultimate recompense. That's right. The reward for the faithful and judgment for those that have yeah. rejected. This is just a shadow coming up right now. This is just a shadow of it, a, a temporal yep. echo of yep. it, so that we can be prepared to win that last day harvest. Guys, if America falls and the Democrats get what they want, the communists get what they want, you know, the, the next thing they're going to go is go after guns, which sets us up not only for communists taking over, but for armies to take over. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the things that has always stood in my mind when the Soviet Union began to examine America and how to take over. Now, they boast about doing it. They were trepidatious about doing it because there was a rifle behind every tree. The Second Amendment kept them from invading America. And you see a lot of this, the controlling of uh, really pushing to get gun control, really pushing to control the airwaves. That began to be a major push after Trump was elected the first time. And Mary, those those orders were coming from China. Mm. Well, and it's it's pretty clear, like if <laughs> if the people that are pushing for gun control get in danger, they want some bodyguards there. With guns. <laughs> well, you know, what, what's what's interesting, and I, I saw this one reporter, he said, you know, he's a conservative reporter, and he said, I think it's really interesting. The ones that told me here a few years ago I didn't need a gun because I had the police are now the exact same people that are defunding the police. It's just a big scheme. It's a big scheme. And and I think more and more people are are going to see it. I think at the same time that God is revealing all this, there's a strength coming to people to be able to handle the truth. Yes. Because because everything that's been done from the because if you if you look at what's happened since um, the '60s, and and what happened with you know the put, the drugs and the you know everybody smoking pot and all this stuff. It's every bit, the pharmaceuticals, the, the, what's been all done to the food, has all been to weaken us Yes. so that we would be susceptible to their mind control broadcast, to their agendas, and to get us in such a state that we can't handle the truth, just like yeah. old Jack Nicholson said in that one. Um, I, and and here's, here's the thing. When you get free, and I can testify of the greatness of God of this, when I got free... And then I fought my way through. There wasn't one thing that I couldn't look at. And I had to look at some horrible, horrible stuff. Yeah. But God strengthened me and gave me the ability to look at it, to face it. He can do that for every person. 
And that's what we're going to see. He has little by little been exposing things so people can say, do you mean this has been going on? Do you mean this is what's actually been going on while I was going and, you know, to movies and maybe some rock concerts or to listen to some country music and dance my little, you know, line dance? This is what was going on? Yep. Yeah. Right under your noses. And might yeah. have you might have been right next to somebody involved in it yeah. and didn't know it. So God's opening your eyes. He's strengthening you so that you can look at this and handle it and rise up in righteous anger against it. Pray the prayers, asking forgiveness for the sins to deplete the power of the occult. Stand against it and believe if I, you know, I don't expect anybody to just take a word I say and say, oh "Boy, I'm going to believe that." And I, if you, if you can, if God's, you know, quickening in your spirit to do that, I'm glad. But you can for sure come into agreement with what the fall feasts represent. Yeah, you know, in, in the midst of all this, you know, we we have had a few bad cops that were very prejudiced, and that needs to be addressed. But I also want to uh, just show my appreciation for what I have seen in some of the videos of the restraint oh, of so many yeah. of our police officers. When you have all these people, and I mean, just right up in their faces, giving them the finger and spitting and, in their, and face. spitting in their yeah. faces, you know, it's, it's like, do you want to keep that finger? They've, they've used great restraint. They I have, believe. they have absolutely used great restraint beyond, beyond uh, measure. And uh, so, you know, we, we need to recognize the good police, even though we don't see it a lot on, on news media, there are there are a lot of wonderful, wonderful police officers. They're very active in their community. They love the people. They want to make a difference, and they're there to keep the people safe. And we need, we need not forget that in the midst of all this. You know, we were told on 9-11 not to judge all Muslims because of the acts of a few. But yet now we're told to judge all cops on the acts of a few. The uh, guys, the liberal media is schizophrenic. It's whatever agenda that they have, they skew everything toward it. And guys, if we're going to be free of Babylon, we, we, we need to plead, plead the blood of Jesus between us and the TV, us and the radio or whatever, so that God can show us truth and to show us mm-hmm. the lies that are being perpetrated. And that they will wrap it with emotions, they'll wrap it with feelings, whatever they got to do to sell the manure that they're selling, they will. But God, but it's the Holy Spirit that can show us truth from lies. And now when he begins doing that, your first reaction is you're going to get very angry. And you might feel sick to your stomach. Yeah. <laughs> because true discernment, when you have it, and I know because I've had a life of, of not understanding it and then coming to grips with what it was, when you get around this type of evil, it will make you sick to your stomach. It you will. will be nauseous. It will. And and God can dampen that to where it's not so bad. But that's that's your knower telling you, I am in the midst of something horrible. Yeah. And guys, I've actually felt that sometimes in the middle of church. Oh, you know, I, I felt it like, a lot of times in the middle of church. Where's the back door? You almost, you almost feel like that old Jerry Clower thing where they're talking about bringing in rattlesnakes and, and I want out of here. Where's the back door? They well, don't have one. Do you, where do you reckon they want one? Mary, I, I have felt that way because there were spiritual snakes in that service. Dr. Marianne Brown called it yeah. when she was on this earth. She said it was a polluted priesthood. Yes. And there are, there are people I see every day. And, and it's just like it's like you're on a ping pong table and you'll think yeah that's that's right what they said I witnessed what they said and then they say something so off the wall and you think ah oh, where how did that get in there it's yeah. it's that double stream thing to where we have been so convoluted and nobody's guarded their, their minds they've they've had all these wrong doctrines intermingled in and so you could they they may have a true prophetic gift but what they just said was so far off i mean everything will go off inside you ding 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 this is contrary to this scripture and this scripture and this is me that doesn't know it like most people and a lot of times all it takes is a minimal understanding of the character of god and the word of god for you to say there is no way in the world that that means what that means there's there's no way because there's this double stream right. going on that okay yeah god wants to do something and then Satan has to put his two cents in to to derail the whole thing and to get you off. Because if you believe the tainted, it'll keep you from getting the pure Mm -hmm. of what God wants to do. And uh, so, guys, this is a time that we have to have discernment. Guys, you got to know the Word of God. Yeah, for sure. you got to know the Word. 
you got to be able to follow the Holy Spirit. And so we need to begin asking, Lord, target anything in our lives yes. that keeps us from hearing the voice of God in our lives and keeps us from knowing the word. Father, we call those things cursed in our lives, marked for destruction. And Father, we ask that everything of the kingdom of God would go into operation to eradicate those things so that we can hear your voice, so that we can study your word, and so that we can walk in the commandments of God exactly the way that Jesus did, because he came to show us how, and then he moved on the inside of us to walk with us as we did it. And Father, I ask that you would just bring just the supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to bring that to pass in our lives. Father, let us have the courage to discard everything that's not of you so that we can embrace the truth that we would be holy, a people that are holy, that are, that are not touching the unclean yeah, because you want to walk in us. You want to you move in power in us. You want to make a difference in people's lives. And Father, that means for you to be there in that level of manifestation that we must become holy vessels. And Holy Spirit, I just invite you to come and enter into that supernatural sanctification process so that we can be a people that God can move through mightily in the last days. And Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Hi friends, Dr. Mike Spaulding here to announce details of the Go Therefore 2020 conference. This year, we will be providing a powerful lineup of scholars, researchers, authors, and Bible teachers for the equipping and edification of the body of Christ. Please note that the Go Therefore 2020 conference is an online event. This will enable you to participate wherever you live. Registration is now open at www.gothereforeconference.com. The cost for this one-of-a-kind conference is only $59. The theme of this year's Go Therefore Conference is What Now, Church? What lies ahead for the Church of Jesus Christ? How must we respond to the government's reaction to the coronavirus? What must Christians do to address the so-called new normal? This year, our speakers include Dr. Michael Lake of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing, Pastor Carl Gallops of Freedom Friday Radio, Pastor Casper McLeod of Spiritual Encounters Radio, Russ Dizdar of Shatter the Darkness Ministries, David Hevner, actor and film director of The Last Evangelist on davidhevner.tv, Coach Dave Daubenmeyer of Pass the Salt Ministries, Pastor Brandon Gallops of Redeemed Ministries Healing and Recovery Center, author and researcher Doug Woodward, author and researcher Carl Tykrib, author, evangelist, and director of Hand of Help Ministries, Michael Bodea, author and researcher L.A. Marzuli, researcher and Bible teacher David Paxton, constitutional scholar and host of Samuel Adams Returns, Tom Navalis, author and evangelist Preston Condra, Stephen Menking, senior editor and host of On the Objective, and the Amateur Society Podcasts, David Arthur of I Belong, Amen Ministries, film director and researcher Tom Dunn, author and director of Omega Dynamics, Jamie Walden, author and editor-in-chief of Technocracy News, Patrick Wood, author, pastor, and president of Chafer Seminary, Dr. Andy Woods, and of course me, Dr. Mike Spaulding. You may register right now at the conference website, www.gothereforeconference.com. The conference starts Friday, July 24th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and concludes Sunday, July 26th at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. All registrants will have two full weeks to watch every presentation from this year's conference. Conference schedule is on the website, www.gothereforeconference.com. You do not want to miss this event. What now, church? God bless you.